I wish I had learned this truth many years ago. Be thankful for the days, good and bad. All right, welcome to episode 16 of Warrior vs. Zombie, and I'm really excited today to introduce my warriors to an amazing warrior, Anil Gupta, and I'll talk more about him in a second, but first I want to talk to you about Warrior vs. Zombie. If this is the first time you've joined us, or maybe you've come back and you've forgotten, we want to talk about the fact that success is a journey, it's not a destination. As warriors, we all have a history of ups and downs, wins and losses that are really all part of making us who we are up to this point, and they provide a foundation for our path forward. We all battle our inner zombie as well as those zombies in our world, and in each episode I interview warriors who are aspiring leaders from all walks of life, entrepreneurs, artists, health practitioners, business owners, coaches, literally any inspired leader that has a story to tell. These warriors all have a cause, they have unique value, and they have a vision that goes generations into the future. And my guest today is fits that mold almost perfectly. Let me talk a little bit about Anil Gupta, and you'll get a chance to hear a little more from him in a second. But Anil is a warrior on so many levels. He actually kind of started his current journey after considering suicide in 2008. Instead, he formulated the happiness formula, and we want to hear more about that. Anil has spoken on Fox News, Harvard, Sky TV, TEDx. If you haven't heard his TEDx talk, you got to go check that out. It's really an amazing TEDx talk. Written a best-selling book called Immediate Happiness, and really it founded the happiness score, which I'm sure he'll give us a chance to access that in a minute. He has created his perfect partner program without dating. So if you're wanting to make sure you got a perfect partner for singles, struggling in relationships, and he performs his relationship and mindset workshops in over 18 countries and is translated in eight languages with with audiences of over 10,000 fans. Anil has a unique intuitive gift to remove the blockages that prevent people from living fulfilled lives in just a matter of hours. He's on a mission to inspire, and I love this one, a billion people, and is always available to share his unique and powerful content. And now today we get to have Anil share with us on Warrior vs. Zombies. So, Anil, in this check-in segment, how are you doing today? I'm doing amazing, David. Thank you for a wonderful introduction, and I'm here to serve your listeners and the audience so that we can give them the greatest gifts, uh, especially in these times. You know, we, we need as much help as we can get and we're going to give them great tools. Amen. That's uh, in this time. I One of the reasons I just had you speak with our Richardson Plano networkers group on this last Friday, and I actually reached out to you directly because of all the needs I see in that community in every community that's going out there to really get things back in perspective. People, we've gotten so much, gosh, so much negative, so much fear, so much everything that getting back to basically the fundamentals of that you talk about was something I saw severely needed in our, that community there. And I think Clearly, it's going to serve the audience of this podcast as well. So so what kinds of things are you finding that you're having to deal with that may or may not be different than what we were dealing with before this part of our journey started? <laughs> well, you know, I, I would take 70 or 80 flights a year, and the first few weeks were very difficult because I suffer from FOMO, fear of missing out. And uh, it was hard. You know, I wanted to get on a flight. My wife said no, and, you know... And I said, you know what, you're right. And it really gave me the ability to focus and get a lot more done because I had a lot of things pending. So it helped me a lot. Uh, I'm getting a lot more done. I'm creating new programs, uh, uh, getting uh, the next book done, getting videos done, and really just enjoying the process. I I get up every morning and play tennis, which is great. So I have a a beautiful routine. Yeah, um, I love 
love hearing warriors like you talk about the things that are happening just like, well, it's a good thing. Yeah, this is what I'm doing. I mean, it's not a, oh my, I've got to wait for things to get back to where they were because as we both know, they're not going back to where we were. They're going back to a better, they're going back. Some things will be similar to where they were, but it's never the way it was. And especially with a change of this magnitude. And I just love the calmness and the really the focus that you bring to just the answer to that question of things you're dealing with is you looked at the travel, having traveled 4 million miles on airlines myself. It's not a bad thing when you get to stay home, but the fear of missing out, the FOMO thing, we both got that one in common. Yeah, really. And I look back at, at airline travel and I think, you know what? It's quite disgusting. <laughs> Uh, people are, are on the plane for four or five hours. They get off the plane. In 20 minutes, you're getting on that plane. And they don't really clean the planes. They don't clean the airports. They don't clean the seats. The, the uh, uh, I'm sure that the hygiene levels were nowhere near as good as they should be. Now you see people cleaning uh, restaurants. They're cleaning supermarkets. And you think, why did they do that before? But, you know, the interesting thing was the first few weeks, I must admit, I, I was in, in a, a little bit of a, a dysfunctional fight thinking, oh, people can't afford me. They have no money. This is going to be really bad. And I'm sure people are like that right now. But the thing is, you have to change one thing. Wherever you go, you go. You're the common denominator in where you go. If you start asking yourself, how can I serve more people? What do I need to change? You see, the, the problem isn't resources. You have to be resourceful. You have to. And people say, oh, I'm going to reinvent myself. No, don't reinvent yourself. Just find out who you are. Be aligned with who you are, your gift, your purpose, your mission, your passion. And then once everything is aligned, it becomes effortless. That's the problem nowadays. People are trying to reinvent themselves so they make more money. But no, that's not the point. Find who you are. Make a bigger impact. That's your legacy. Oh, man, I love it. Uh, we are so aligned in terms of knowing where you know why you're here, where you're going. I can't wait to get to... The third segment here where we talk a little bit more about that. We're really aligned with that. Well, you know, and Neil, we could talk. I, I know you far too well, and I know how powerful it is to talk to you. So I'm going to actually just take this opportunity to take a quick break. We're going to hear a little bit more of Ricky Jean Wright, and it's not the getting there. And then we're going to come back, and I want to hear about your story, the fact that you contemplated suicide, some other things like that that are in the introduction that I heard here. I kind of want to hear a little bit more of that backstory and have our warriors in the audience kind of hear how you've navigated up to this point. And so that's what we'll do in the next segment. So listen for a few minutes or a few seconds, about 30 seconds to Ricky Jean Wright, and it's not the getting there. But the miles become the teacher while the student learns real slow Traveling blind most of the time Wherever you go It's not the getting there It's the journey every day All right, welcome back to Warrior vs. Zombie in this amazing episode 16 with Neil Gupta. And I can't tell you how excited I am to hear a little bit more of his story in this segment. As a warrior, I know that he's had challenges, as I call them, zombies, both inside and out. And I'm really looking, because he's such an insightful guy, I really want to hear, Neil, what, what your story and your journey has been like getting to today? It really started in uh, 2008, November 2008, when I was on the verge of suicide. I'd lost everything in the stock market, real estate. And I, I've been through this situation before, but I, I, this time I thought, you know, there's no way out. I, I just I, I can't, I can't find a way out. And fortunately for myself, I, I got invited somehow to a private event with Tony Robbins. Uh, he did an intervention on me. His wife did an intervention on me. His wife's brother did an intervention on me. And eventually my wife stepped in and she did an intervention on me. And I really realized that my, 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 my uh, 
identity was around money. You see, once you change your identity, you change how you show up in life, you change how you uh, show up in your relationships, in your personal life, your business life, and who you become changes. So, you know, ask yourself, what is my identity? Is it money? Is it love? Is it indifference? Is it impact? And then once you live inside of your identity, everything is effortless, smooth, aligned. And that's where a lot of conflicts occur because if you're not aligned, there's a dysfunctional uh, aspect to your life there which causes a lot of frustration, confusion, and it doesn't have to be that way. So uh, it was a, a deep adversity, but adversity brings clarity. Adversity is your friend. I know that you may be going through some adversity right now, but ask yourself, what is it I can learn here? What is it I need to let go of? What is it I need to change? How can I show up differently? What's the meaning I put behind this? Who am I? What is my greatness? By asking more questions, you can chunk everything down and get clarity. And that's what, David, this is what people are missing is clarity. Wow. So I, your identity being tied up in your finances or your money is pretty common for guys like me, guys like you, uh, when I retired in 2005 on my own journey, it wasn't because of a trauma. It was because I realized that I didn't have the alignment. I was disconnected. And even though I had a seven digit income at the time, I had five kids. I put 4 million miles on airlines and I wasn't aligned and I couldn't sleep. My health was suffering. And I didn't have peace. And that's a term that I use in my Christian walk. I mean, I have this peace within me to know, and I didn't have that. And so I made the choice. But even when you make it in a positive way, that doesn't change necessarily the way you and everybody around you identifies you. And that was one of the things on my own journey. When you discovered, you have such brilliant and amazing, your book is amazing, um, your philosophy, the G cubed or whatever, for me is just that simple concept that you shared with me has, cha has changed my life in terms of my priorities, how I approach things. Um, but how did you come to, I mean, I know you came through it through adversity, but the, the, the brilliant nuggets that you just shared how did you discover those? Was that through the interventions? Was that through you internalizing it and then applying it? I, I know my own story. I'm just really curious as far as how you kept moving on that journey once you realized where you were at. Well, really, it's all experiential because what I did uh, was I started to give. And I realized, uh, hang on a minute, I'm feeling different. I'm feeling better. What did I do? I gave. Wow, that's interesting. So I realized that when you give authentically, all the pain and suffering disappears and it became addictive. And from that, uh, more experiential stuff happened. A friend of mine said, Anil, you've made a difference to my life. Why don't you do an event? And I said, well, I'd like to, but I'm kind of scared. And he said, what are you scared of? And I said, look, you know, honestly, I care what other people think of me. What happens if no one turns up? He said, Anil, if no one turns up, no one will know. I thought, oh, I can do that. You know, I'm, I was so concerned what other people thought of me. Even whilst I was contemplating suicide, that's what I was thinking about. What will my father think of me? What will other people think of me? And if, even if I tried to commit suicide, Anil, I, I would talk to myself, Anil, you would even mess that up. And, uh, you know, because you're such a failure. And, you know, you're good at being a failure. So, you know, having uh, the ability to laugh at yourself, it's okay, you know. At the end of the day, there's only two things that matter, your relationship and your health. Nothing else matters. You know, when you die, you die. You know, it could be tomorrow. We just don't know. And there is only the now. So I started to give. And the moment I started to give, the pain and suffering disappeared, which gave me hope. And then um, I, I did other stuff. I, I grew and, and, and I was grateful. But I didn't know that that was part of the formula until I looked back. I read a book and I thought, you know, It'd be interesting, what did I actually do? And I, and, I, and I wrote it down, I thought, I wish there was a formula. Then I looked at it and I thought, oh my gosh, it's the three Gs, give, grow, gratitude. If you do these three Gs, um, it's not rocket science, it, and it's simple stuff. You know, me, for example, I'm always sabotaging my success. 
and throwing rocks in front of myself. So, you know, we don't need to live that way. We can be in charge of our own destiny by just chunking it down because honestly, a lot of us are just overwhelmed. We have so many things going on and if we chunk things down, you know, focus on one thing at a time. In the moment you give, all the pain and suffering disappears. When you give, you feel amazing. And when you grow, you feel amazing. See, everything we do as human beings, we do for one reason. That's for the feeling it gives us. That's it. Absolutely. Yeah, whether it's the house we live in or the job we have or the relationship we're in, it's all about the feelings. We're seeking that ideal day, as I say. We're seeking that experience. It's not the, the thing. And that's what I had to learn was it wasn't the 7,500 square foot house and the new cars and living in the right neighborhood and sending my kids to private school and all the things. It was the experiences and the feelings that go with those experiences that was really important to me. And you brought that, by the way, you ha you don't even realize it, but you made me, gave me an aha moment the first time you spoke to my group a couple of years ago when you said your own journey, giving changed everything. It became a, almost a miraculous thing. And I had exactly the same experience when I was at the lowest point. This was after I retired and after I lost, interestingly enough, in 2008, 2009 time frame, lost over $3 million in real estate and stock. And I wasn't prepared and I was ashamed of my lack of attention. And at the time I was even in ministry serving people and trying to fulfill my decision of spending whatever time God gave me on the planet to make a difference, not just make money. But yet I hadn't really figured out what was the turning point in me getting out of my, I never got to the point of contemplating suicide, but I got to the point of feeling totally worthless and totally failure. And it was the day that somebody who came to me with financial problems, when I was in a hole where I wasn't even sure if I could feed my family and pay the rent for a short period of time there. And they came to me with financial problems. And I said, okay, I'm just going to help. I'm going to do what I can to, to counsel or consult or encourage you. And all of a sudden it all just faded away because they said, you changed my life. This was great. I said, I wish I could change my own life, but you know what I'm saying? I mean, it was like, I wish I could have had that experience at that time myself, but actually I did. And it was the giving that really changed it. And, and to, even today with my own clients, when they just lost a job or they're gone through a major thing and they come to me and I want to start, I'm, a, I'm their vision warrior. They know where they want to go or they're figuring that out. I say, Go volunteer. Go find a place where you can serve. If you haven't, if you've been in a job, you haven't been doing that. I and it's it's really. I don't think I've ever had an original thought because that all kind of goes back to the Bible, but also you know rem, you reminded me of that in in your story. So it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, you know it, it. It sounds so simple, but you know the, there is one difference that people need to be aware of, and it's this. When you give, you have to give wanting nothing in return. And a lot of people are giving, hoping to get something back, some gratification. Or So let me give you an example. This morning I was driving along. I saw a truck driver coming, and I thought, I'll let him through. At least he will thank me, because a lot of the drivers in Florida, he didn't thank me. And I thought, Anil, what's going on here? You know. And then I realized I was being judgmental. I was attached. I had an expectation. So, you know, you have to catch yourself. And if you really give without wanting any back, anything back, what do babies do? They're constantly giving. They don't ask anything back. They give love. You see, that's the thing. That the moment you feel this, it becomes addictive and it's incredible. You know, there are two types of people. Uh, ones that make you happy when you enter the room and ones that make you happy when you leave the room. Honestly, when I was younger, people were not happy to see me. And I, and I realized uh, that in the last few days, and I thought, wow, you know, that's not good. But now, uh, hopefully, it's turned the other way around. It definitely has. And I think that's a, this is, we're at a good point 
to kind of land the plane here because I want to talk about where you are right now. You've done a great job of not only sharing with us where you've come from and where you are to a point and how you kind of got there. So it's it really is powerful and I, th- I really encourage our listeners to continue to get more information from Anil here. And what we're going to talk about in the next segment is where are you today? What's continuing to keep you moving forward? The value that I know you're providing to your audience and this audience I know. And then if anything were possible, where would this all lead us? And then we'll get back. So right now we're going to listen to a little more, another segment of Ricky Jean Wright, and it's not the getting there, and we'll be right it's back. Not a race to see how many people know your name. One day you realize time was worth more than the gold. It's not the getting there. When you get there, you'll know. Funny how wisdom All right, we're back with segment three of our game. talk with Anil Gupta and Warrior vs. Zombie. Anil, you've kind of brought us up to the present day and you've given us so many things, so many warrior nuggets, as I say already, to talk about. But tell me a little bit about what you're doing today in this time, how you're doing it, kind of why you're doing it, and if anything were possible, where would that take us? You know, uh, I've had a lot more time. So I, uh, because I was traveling so much, I, I would never get the important stuff done. I would meet people, obviously, and have great connections, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't get the administrative work done, the paperwork done, the, the nitty-gritty, the video. So what, what I've been doing is focusing on content. I've created a, a men's group. Uh, masterminded women's group mastermind i'm doing a three-day retreat i'm working on my second book i'm doing videos i'm serving people and i'm producing content and i'm getting things cleaned up uh, you know little things even my computer cleaning up my computer we sold four computers in the last uh, six weeks they've just been lying around the house you know it may not sound like it's an important thing but it is because once you start cleaning out once you declutter you'll you'll get clarity. So let me share a story. Years ago, I I helped a man and he said, can I help you? I said, no, you're good. And one day I asked him, what do you actually do? He says, Anil, I help people write a book. I said, you know what, will you help me? And he did. So he came around my house and he said, okay, let's go in your office. And I said, no, I don't want to go in my office. He said, why? I said, well, it's a bit of a mess. He said, Anil, that's the first thing we need to do. As soon as my office was clean, the book was written in a day. So, you know, for the audience out there, there's something stopping you from being your greatness, from getting you to do things that you know you should be doing but you haven't been doing. And it's just noise. It's clutter. Just remove some clutter. At the end of the day, you know, you, you, you've got a few things left in life. You know, don't hold on to things. Don't have attachments to things. You know, it's not the things that make you happy. It's the magical moments. Life is not about the number of breaths you take, but the number of times your breath is taken away. Wow. Yeah, that is actually, it's interesting because I have attention deficit. And one of the things I've learned is if my office is messy, or even if my house is messy, and there's not an organization to it, if everything isn't in its place, because everything has a place, then it's distracting to me and it actually does hold me back. So I totally relate to that is really sometimes we say, okay, just go get the sale or just go do this and, you know, just throw this stuff out there. And it's really like piling more stuff onto a mess. So clearing the mess is not a waste of time. It's not a, a, procrastination. That's one of the things I kept telling myself. Well, that by cleaning out my files and getting my inbox cleaned out and doing all that stuff. No, that's just that I'm just procrastinating on doing what I really need to do. And the reality of it is it's not true. I mean, what you said is the same thing I experienced is when I 
got my files in order and got things, got rid of stuff, minimalized, which I'm a minimalist now, then it was so much easier to focus. Yeah. And, you know, um, I, I've been helping a lot of people and a lot of people are busy uh, because they feel guilty. They feel that they should be busy. And guys, look, ladies and gentlemen, don't get busy. You don't have to prove anything to anybody. You don't have to feel guilty. Don't get busy, productive. If you get productive, it releases so much inside of your head that you get present to your greatness, your genius, your gift and your ability to make a bigger impact. Please, please, please do not get busy, get productive. Ah, that's beautiful advice. So as far as where you're going, this, this is great advice and what you're kind of doing right now, now that you're working and getting things organized and you're, you're kind of moving forward, you're doing all these things that I think are positioning you and creating more content and stuff. What coming out of this or if anything were possible, what does your ideal day look like coming out of or in this and coming out of this? Well, you know what? I don't see any difference. You know, the thing is we can curate our own life. We don't have to be uh, reacting or responding to anything externally. Why not create and curate your own life? So every morning I get up, that's my start of the day, and I hope you all get up too. That's a joke. <laughs> but then I play tennis at seven. Uh, have, I have a, a 16 ounces of water with lemon, play tennis, have some more lemon with water, come back, have some celery juice, uh, talk to my wife, have a shower. And then uh, we, we may have a very light lunch or may not um, um, make a few phone calls and maybe, maybe, maybe not play some tennis in the afternoon. But really just enjoy life. I will not schedule too much work. I will ne- if, as a coach, I will never do a back-to-back coaching session. I just won't do it because it's not fair on your clients, you know. Uh, and I, I have the freedom to do what I like when I want, uh, how I want, however I want, by not scheduling too many things. I really do not like scheduling because to me, scheduled stuff is a loss of freedom. If I have to schedule things, that's great. But if you schedule too many things, to me, it's a loss of freedom. So I want my freedom. So I'm urging your listeners and audience out there, curate your own life. This is your life. This is not a dress rehearsal. You're in charge. Amen. Actually, that's a, that's brilliant. I mean, it just, you know, orchestrate your own life, curate your own life. Um, I always say, people say, you're busier than anybody I know. How come you say you're retired? And I said, because retirement to me is not doing nothing. Retirement is doing what I want, when I want, with who I want, where I want, which means I don't have to get on a plane. And so I'm retired. In fact, I realized, as you did, that retirement is more, I mean, I play golf and hung out with my kids when I first retired and thought that was what retirement was supposed to be. And then all of a sudden I realized my life purpose wasn't in there. And all of a sudden I realized that that wasn't making me happy. And so now I've curated my life to have the same kind of routine you're talking about and having the same kind of control, but doing it intentionally. And that's kind of what you're, in fact, that's exactly what you're, you're telling us. Yeah. You know, uh, David, the most important part of a race is the finish and retirement is the most important part that's where you make the biggest impact that's when you have the greatest knowledge that's when you have the greatest influence almost and retirement isn't playing golf and sitting around you'll get bored and you will die early and your wife will want to kick you out the house so it's all about the impact you make you got that right i I said i've been retired since 2005, so that'd be 15 years. And one of the things that was a wake up call for me about six months in, as I started doing the research of life expectancy post retirement, the way we had defined retirement, what was it? Average was six years. And I said, okay, now that's not it. You know, I've still got four of my five kids at home. I'm not looking to check out anytime soon. And I don't think I was going to make the tour playing golf. So I had to really get back to. <laughs> Get back to too late. Yeah, right. I had to get back to what it was that I was really put on the planet to do. So 
that's been my own journey. Well, this is this has really been great. Anything else that you want to share before we go into the final segment here? Any other thoughts on your, if anything were possible? You know, there's one sentence that changed my life, and I, I encourage all of you to do this one thing. Be so amazing that you cannot be ignored. And if you are ignored, it doesn't matter because how you show up will be this magnificent soul. Be so amazing you cannot be ignored. This one sentence completely changed my life. Wow. Well, that's a great way to end this segment for sure. So I'm going to shut her down here and I'm going to hear one more snippet here before we end. And we're going into the what I call the land of plane segment. And in this segment, Anil, you've given me so many things and given the audience so many things to consider. But what I'm going to ask you when we come back is what, if anything, were that we should take away? And you've probably already given them, but if you haven't, if there's two things or three things that you can say, if we take these things away, what would they be? And then I'm going to ask you how we follow up with you and continue to be part of your world and that'll be where we'll go. So if that, with that, we're going to land the plane here for this segment and come back for the final segment with Anil Gupta and Warrior vs. Zombie. Funny how wisdom and youth are always two different games. The years flew by so fast is the common human complaint. The memories in our minds turn to diamonds in our soul. And by the grace of God, on down. All right, we're back for the final Land the Plane segment of Warrior vs. Zombie. And my head's spinning already from all of the nuggets that Anil has given me and reminded me of and encouraged us all on. But I'm going to ask you the question I always ask at this point, Anil, what if we take away anything from this podcast? Could be one thing, could be a concept, whatever, could be a couple of things. What would it be that you would want us to take away if anything were possible from this, this podcast? See, life isn't about you. It's about the difference that you make. We're here to make a difference. We're here to make a huge difference. We need to get out of our own way. We need to be so amazing that you cannot be ignored. And it's not about us. It's about the difference that we make. Very simple, but very powerful. And I think, David, you realize that when you retire. Yes. Um, I wish I had realized it early, Anil, but that's the simplest things are the things that I think we can actually put into practice. And if we don't put an idea or concept into practice, it's not worth anything anyway. So I love the simplicity and the fundamental nature of what you're sharing with us today is that it's not about us. We got to get out of our own way and we just need to move forward. So it's, it's beautiful. Well, tell me and the audience here, how do we follow up with you? How do we stay connected with you, Anil? I know you've got a lot of things going. We've talked about it. We're working together. We've got an event coming up. What's the easiest and most consistent way we can connect with you to get more information and stay connected? You know, the easiest way would probably go on my website, which would be meetanil.com. And on that website, you can take the happiness test where you can find out how happy you are by doing a three minute test. And when you take this test, you'll get a numerical score, but also you'll get about 25 videos on how you can increase your score. Now this is amazingly powerful, amazingly clear, amazingly concise. And it really tells you how happy you are and exactly what areas of your life you need to work on because there's no other way to find out. Otherwise, you're just overwhelmed. So we just go to your website. Would you repeat that again for me? Yeah. Meetanil.com. Very M-E-E-T, Anil, A-N-I-L.com. And on there, there's a button to take the happiness test. Um, there's a little bit about me, a little uh, way to connect with me. And once you know you're happy, 
having a score, you can retake it in two or three weeks after you, you've been uh, through the exercises that I give you and redo that and notice the difference. And it, it, it raises your score, but it raises the score of the people that you love around you because it's infectious. Awesome. Well, that's a pretty, uh, pretty straightforward way. And I assume that score is, or it's, it, it's, it's free, right? I mean, it's, I, I hate to say free. I don't like free because, you know, is, is that, is that a score that we can take? They can just take. Well, you know what? You almost have to pay for it. <laughs> you almost have to pay for it. <laughs> I like that. Almost. Just made that up. Almost, I like that. Almost have to pay for it. Actually, <laughs> it's funny that, you know, nothing in life is free, but complimentary is good. And uh, it's always value. And I know I've, when you spoke with us on Friday and stuff, you said, you know, focus on value, not cost. And so we always want to be providing value. And for sure, you've done that in this podcast, Anil. I'm so thankful. I'm so grateful. You've given me a lot to be grateful for today. Just listening to you talk, you've reminded me of things, blessings that I've had that I have need to make sure I've acknowledged the blessings in my life and the, and the things going. So... Well, let's call it a podcast here. And if you haven't been following us, wherever you're listening to us now, we'll be back next week on Warrior vs. Zombie. I'd ask that you like us, follow us, download, share it with your friends, and continue to come and see us once a week for the next episode of Warrior vs. Zombie. And again, thank you, Anil. I appreciate you're being part of our audience, and I know the warriors that listen to this are going to be saying, wow, that changed my life. You know, David, it's my pleasure. We, we um, uh, have a duty to share our gifts, and we have a duty to show up differently. And really, it's my pleasure because I have no idea the impact it will make. You have no idea the impact it will make. But I know it, it will, if it affects one person's life, it's worth it. Amen. Well, thank you guys for being here. This has been a great episode of Warrior vs. Zombie. I'm so thankful for Anil, and I want you to share this with your friends. We have This is episode 16, so there's 15 others. And uh, let's listen to the final segment of It's Not the Getting There with Ricky Jean Wright. And you have a beautiful day. It's not the getting there. It's the journey every day it's not a race to see how many people know your name one day you realize time was worth more than the gold it's not the getting there when you get there you'll know one day you realize Time was worth more than the gold It's not the getting there When you get there, you'll know